Uh, okay, so uh, last meeting I mentioned Unison, and Unison is a file synchronizer from uh, written in OCaml. It uh, works under OSX, uh, Unix, and Windows, and all it does is uh, makes bidirectional synchronization of data. So if you have a client and you do sync, it will check uh, changes on the server, verify that the changes don't conflict, and like copy all the data in both places. Um, so the project started uh, in 1999 as a research paper, and right now it's mostly in maintenance mode, so no new features are added, it's just um, they're fixing bugs here and there. So Unison was the oldest project, and the same researcher uh, moved on to uh, write Harmony, which was supposed to be a um, piece of software that uh, uh, used for certain synchronizing hierarchical structures that is expressed as S uh, XML. That didn't go far. Uh, then they settled on uh, another project called Boomerang, which is still active and which is basically lets you create sort of like a lenses for bidirectional transformation of text. So the, the, the way this whole thing went is how do we merge a bunch of text automatically. Um, so my use case, I mostly use Unison for syn synchronizing uh, in between my computer, so laptop, desktop, and a couple of Raspberry Pis. Uh, um, in, uh, generally, Unison used synchronizing between two points, and uh, when he, uh, using more than two computers, uh, it uses client-server models. So server sits there, and clients, uh, client and server becomes the two points of synchronization. Um, so for the software, there's two packages right now. Unison is the client server software and Unison GTK is the GUI utility for synchronization if you don't want to bother with text. That's basically how it uh, looks. Uh, and um, in most cases, including in my uh, case, I prefer to do synchronization manually just to know what's going on. So in majority of cases, uh, if Unison detects that file change, uh, file changes newer, it just says, well, get that file. Uh, and uh, in case uh, ch it doesn't know, it lets you either for synchronization one or the other direction, see diff or merge files manually. But usually merging files manually, it just takes too much time. So it's like 99.999% so, uh, like it's one way or the other. And honestly, I never managed to merge a file. Uh, uh, it can be binary file, but I have no idea how to merge binary files. So, um, so the, the way setting up Unison, it's uh, it uses client side uh, configuration only. So the endpoint where, where you're merging things doesn't have to have a configuration file as long as all of the configuration file consistent, everything uh, should work. And uh, when the f Unison first uh, run, it creates Unison directory in the home, and uh, the default uh, configuration, default PTRF is the default synchronization configuration file. In that configuration file, you define a local root, which is the root point where all the paths are uh, defined in the local system, and remote root is for where uh, root for remote system is defined. And it uh, Unison can use either SSH as a protocol or it can talk over a socket. Uh, so uh, after uh, both routes are defined, you define the uh, paths you would like to synchronize and Unison does not keep any kind of uh, version control. So uh, whatever is in your local system gets on the remote system or whatever is changed in the remote system comes down in the local system or changes go in both directions at the same time. Uh, so, and uh, synchronization command, the, the one I use the most is uh, Unison Auto, which it uh, the, the program automatically checks what's the new, newest version of the file and asks you questions only if uh, there's conflicts. And conflicts usually are, I would work on my laptop, modify a file, then I forget to synchronize, go home, work on the desktop and modify the same file, and then, oh, now I need to merge things. 
Um, so th this is how uh, uh, sync works in the text mode, uh, like this, this command works. It shows you all the files changed, the direction where the things are propagating, and the file names. So if you need to force uh, synchronization in one or the other direction, you just take off uh, auto flag, and uh, the Unison will check, uh, check um, uh, every, uh, ask you uh, which way you want to synchronize every file. Uh, there's also other options like batch sync. It will synchronize file according to internal Unison rules, uh, and it doesn't ask any question. And as I mentioned, you can just um, synchronize things uh, using Unison via socket. Just specify socket, remote host port number, and the rest of the definition is like is is the same as SSH definition. Um, then uh, it's also pos possible to have multiple Unison configurations. So if you're synchronizing one, sy one system to one server and the other directories to the other server, you can have that, have multiple files, and just uh, do that. So I, g I guess if you work for different organizations and that each organization wants to work on that files, you can do that. Uh, you, you can synchronize uh, the, the, those two sets of files separately. Uh, it, there are backup options which I have never used because uh, Unison technically is not a backup solution, uh, but uh, th th there is um, extensive documentation on how to... Con uh, backups work as either a flag or you can pass a pattern to a backup uh, parameter which would say, uh, which would say, oh, th these files, uh, th this pattern of files will be backed up, or everything is backed up except uh, the specific uh, pattern of files. Uh, there is fast check. So the way Unison does uh, checking, it's either uh, on Linux by default, fast check is um, just checking inode and timestamp, and on Windows, um, uh, it checks uh, the contents of the file, which is a lot slower because Windows. Uh, and, but it, it is possible to control this behavior using fast, fast check parameter to just uh, check um, timestamps, false does full checking, and auto uh, relies on default Unison behavior. Um, then, uh, uh, if you want, if you know the rules of reconciliation, you can um, set prefer flag, uh, specifying which route to use. It will say, uh, it will specify if you want to use newer or, or older version of the file for that route. Uh, so, uh, issues with the Unison. Uh, there is no understanding of hard links, so it, whatever is under hard link will be synchronized. Uh, I said that Unison kind of worked uh, with the sub revisions uh, last time. This turns out to be not true. I tried uh, running a uh, Unison version from a squeeze, and then I run it against the client with JS, and it would just crash. So uh, you need to have the same version of Unison everywhere in order to, to it to work. It's not a problem in, in, in my case, because first of all, this, um, this uh, software is in maintenance mode, so it doesn't get frequent releases. I run Debian, but if those two things are not an option, uh, it's possible to just uh, compile a camel into executable and that would make uh, one version across every system. Uh, and it's possible to run several different versions of Unison at the same time. So you can have server running five or six different versions of Unison and they like synchronize across each other. But that's an extreme case. The other uh, thing is I noticed that it uses quite a lot of RAM. So when I synchronize, I think, half a gigabyte the source tree of some sort, it took two gigabytes of RAM to figure out all the changes and reconcile them. I tried to use 512 megabytes, and then it would crash. So basically what I have is an encrypted system with SS uh, running only SSH, and I would synchronize my desktop, my laptop, and whatever Raspberry Pi I have. Uh, running and empirically I figure out that at uh, two gigabytes of RAM that VM stopped crashing. So that's what I used. Uh, questions?
Yeah. What do you actually use it for? To make your environment the same wherever you are? Like uh, I'm, I'm just using it to files that I need to synchronize that I don't need to have under version control. So photos, documents. Uh, at some point I had source tree for Marlin because I was working on my computer and my laptop was next to a 3D printer and I couldn't be bothered to find a long USB cable. But yeah, mo mostly right now it's uh, I have documents, pictures, and a couple of a uh, uh, couple of uh, directories with like videos and big files under sync. And uh, usually, I run the server at home inside my uh, apartment. So uh, I'm on the, when I'm on the network, I, I, I basically synchronize my desktop and my laptop for this, and it's sort of done almost automatically. Uh, I well, almost. Uh, I, I found a file that checks, uh, some Python code that checks for enodes using Unison, so technically can do full automatic synchronization like um, Google Docs or something like that, but I actually haven't done that. I, used, I just use Unison auto command and it seems to work rather well. If anybody remembers, there is thing called OneSync. No, wait, One One Cloud, and I wanted to use it to um, synchronize all of the files and then have web access. But when I actually set it up at home, I realized that it, its performance was not great, especially if you want to synchronize some source tree or something like that that you don't plan to develop. And then I tried uh, Unison, and it just it's really fast. I think you meant own cloud? Yeah, own cloud. Seneca? Actually, uh, Unison, another use case was one at my office where I went and uh, it's not in place with any newer systems, but it's all for backups. But I actually used it as part of backing up data where I had a library that would synchronize it to a directory on a file share. And then the file share was a uh, sign that actually was back. Yeah, I actually kind of use the, the, that scenario too, but the big problem is if some data gets corrupted and you would like to synchronize it with Unison, Unison would just happily synchronize it away. And yeah, th that's why synchronization software is not a backup software. And that's why uh, I, there's a daily synchronization to a place that actually was, had real backups. Oh yeah, then it makes sense. Uh, basically, I use this sort of like as a replacement for Google Docs if I don't want to use Google Docs. I just used it for form to put it, my files from a small backup system into a place that would get backed up. Scott, do you have any grievances with Unison that you'd like to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> um, my use case was, was oh, about six, seven years back now. Look at the um, camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was trying to replicate uh, log, um, log files from instant messaging applications. And the two pieces of software would be sitting running on two separate hosts simultaneously. And some protocols do multi-endpoint. Some protocols don't. Well, um, so when you log logged into MSN, you, you, your other account would be kicked out, mm. and this would generate conversation log files that never conflicted. But if you had uh, something like XMPPP, it was very realistic to get a log file on both systems simultaneously with the same timestamps in the file name, so the file names were identical. But for some reason, one would get most of the messages, one wouldn't get up all the messages, because XMMP was unreliable back in those days. And then Unison would go, I don't know what you want to do, 
do you want to spend the next uh, five, ten minutes of your lunch break figuring out which is which and how to merge these? Yeah, and you'll have to merge those manually. Yeah, and that's that's what drove me up the wall on Unison. Uh, in, 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 it was the workflow that drove me nuts with Unison. It was also the fact that I hadn't proper backups, so any wrong move in Unison was fatal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I was actually looking for a backup system as opposed to a synchronization system. And it, it comes down to what are my windows of recoverability on deleting something? And that's where it really comes down to uh, a good system in my mind. Unison has its place and it's good at what it does. But I, I realized I was using it for the wrong purpose. Yeah, and I think as we get more and more cloud services, there are fewer and fewer use cases for it. Unless you want to build your own cloud service <laughs> using Unison. Is there a way to version control as well as No. Uh, this, the, I, I use this still specifically that I don't want overhead of version control. If I need version control, I just use Git. I think uh, sort of PMS version. Oh, uh, like I, I think there's like a backup version, but I never actually used backup uh, option in order to do version control. Well, like, I mean, the, the selling point of it is just uh, R -sync al uh, efficient R-Sync algorithm for bidirectional uh, bi trans transformation. Uh, like I, I went through the user manual and there weren't a lot of things about version control. and. That's honestly, I, that's not something I honestly expect from it. And it sounds like the problem that you have, Scott, with the uh, with log files with the same name and substantial partial content that you'd like to maybe merge inside the single file, this isn't going to work. It's not going to work very well. You should use Boomerang. <laughs> no, no, I don't know what's uh, going to work. With text files, Git actually is reasonable because I can get decent diffs out of it. Um, yeah. And uh, Pigeon's log files are actually pretty easy to deal with. Um, uh, quite realistically, this is no longer an issue for me because I just stopped running the client in multiple places. Well, I understand. I was just wondering. I seem to remember being able to give, uh, give the, a, a, a machine dot file name rather than just a, a file name. So if it's constructing a file. When it constructs the log file, you, you give it a specific name for that file. And I, I use the post name dot like, you know, file, whatever. I'm just remembering thinking of Okay, am I thinking of something else? Is this uh, does uh, Pigeon do this or not? I guess the question. Not to my recollection, yeah. but anything's possible with plugins. Okay, mm -hmm. that's true. There's the river. <laughs> Sorry, not trying to hijack <laughs> yeah. your Q and A here. Oh, go ahead. So, how do uh, Unison handle the 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 deletion? So, my understanding in Unison, you are you have different places. You put in files at different places. And synchronize the, the, those new, newly added files and are, are, are available ha, 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 everywhere. So if you delay, delete some file somewhere, will every place get it deleted? De 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 yes. So one uh, well, if you run uh, Unison with auto flag, it will just see oh the file has been deleted. It doesn't track like content. It does track files. It's old fashioned thing. And uh, when the file is deleted, it will just propagate the deletion. Unless you don't use the auto flag and you synchronize everything manually. And you can, uh, at that point in the dialogue, you can say, oh no, actually I deleted this file accidentally. I want it back. And the, in this case, it will just copy it from the remote, but you have to do it manually. How does it know a file is deleted? You can't look at the iNode. Well, it's probably the absence of iNode that it will <laughs> notice. Uh, it, uh, sorry, it, it, I'm sorry, actually, uh, the, that Unison uh, f 
directory contains the metadata for the synchronization. And it contains like, uh, for each path that I mentioned, it has own directory with metadata. And that's how it keeps track. Go ahead. I have a big file on my on my laptop, and uh, I move it in uh, in another uh, subdirectory. How the system see this uh, this case? Like a uh, our name or like a deletion and uh, uh, addition of another file? I I don't remember. Like I think I did that. I, I should have looked it up. I did that uh, move of a big file, and I think it detected it. So once uh, the inode and timestamp, uh, uh, I need to look it up, but I'm pretty sure that once inode and timestamp uh, comparison fails, it uh, um, Unison does the slow comparison and looks into the file and does whatever it finds MD5 or whatever rsync algorithm. Uh, uses to synchronize so because uh, underneath it still uses our sync algorithm to uh, send uh, the changes back and forth but if you rename a file the i know the same uh, it uh, the timestamp will be updated but you know no? the i know is the same that it can identify that it was the same file uh, so it can identify a rename based on the i know yeah, and if the file, uh, the thing with Unison, it uh, watches the directory. So if the file has been renamed and it was re has been renamed outside of the directory, I think it's just gonna get deleted. Or if uh, it's moved from one directory that it watches to the other, it could be like you need to send the whole file back. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of uh, the use case that I actually haven't experienced. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's like um, it depends on which, how, in that particular case, uh, uh, Unison would act. Whether it's gonna check the inode or it will use uh, rsync algorithm to check for actual changes inside of the file. Does rsync bear by itself not do what you do? Uh, rsync uh, does synchronization, I think, only in one direction. Mm -hmm. Oh. Once upon a time, this was a big, once upon a time they were mapped, that Unison was revolutionary because rsync did have yeah. a bidirectional option. Yeah. Today it does. Today it does, so it's less revolutionary. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's still somewhat easier than writing rsync scripts. It's easier to write unison file, but it's, at this point it's a marginal difference. The interactive part is really, the interactive part is nice. Yeah. It, it gives you, it means you can review what it's about to do and say, I think I disagree on that. I know what's going on. But it's like, oh, it's claiming that Server 2 has a newer version. No, no, that was a mistake because I know what I was doing. Yes. Um, yeah. But Arson does have the ability to do versioning. So if it finds that situation, it can actually just maintain that full copies. I think this is the whole point. In 1999, this was revolutionary. In 2018, there's now just that many other projects that don't the same thing. Yeah, basically. And he's highly competitive. Yeah. And having seen something better come along, 
you know he's going to get down and work some more. Okay, uh, is there any more questions? Uh, I guess then we're done. Thank you.